for you, Phil, breakdancing, what was the initial draw? Like, what got you into it in the first place? Yeah, when I first saw breaking, it was in front of the art gallery in Vancouver. It was just super, I've never seen breaking live before at that time. I had seen it on YouTube and stuff, um, but it was just so, I don't know, so powerful. It, it, it obviously catches the eye right away. At the time, I was a kid, um, like right before going into high school, so I was looking for something to do. I saw that. I thought that would impress girls. That would impress people. It looks super cool. Um, and so that was my initial draw. And then obviously after, you realize there aren't even a lot of girls in the sport. It's mostly dudes. Um, but now that's changing, which is fantastic. There's a lot more female representation, which is awesome. Um, but um, I fell in love with the actual kind of sport and art of it. Bonus points for being honest about yes. that. You thought it would get girls. Um, to be good, I guess, to, to go beyond sort of recreational mm -hmm. and kind of do it with your friends and that kind of stuff. What was the, the, do you remember the change for you where you were like, okay, this is my passion and this is the thing I really want to put all my yeah, effort into? I don't into. think it was like a moment. I think it was just a gradual, like I started just falling in love with it. It was like a relationship. Like I started falling in love with it, like slowly but surely. First, it was very difficult. I think that's the one thing with breaking. It draws a certain type of individual because you have to be kind of committed from the beginning because right from the beginning it's actually quite challenging to learn it's very physically difficult and so but I fell in love with that challenge right away um, and then falling in love with not just the athletic part but the artistry of it and then the traveling the community the people I got to meet I've made some of my closest friends through it um, I've got to travel the world and so every step I was like falling more in love with it and I just kind of became obsessed and still am obsessed I still have the same love for it that I did on day one um, if not more now and it's giving back to you like yeah. it all that yeah. this dedication is is paying yes, off thankfully <laughs> right um current world champion mm -hmm. um from from 2022 yes. um so when it gets to that elite level mm -hmm. does it change um what do you what do you have to focus on what becomes yeah. your priority at that it stage? definitely changes um in terms of like you know it, it's different from when i first started this is a full-time job now it's not just a hobby that i do it's not just for fun although i think for me it's always been important to keep the fun in it regardless mm -hmm. um it definitely has more stresses more stress factors more expectations uh, but with that comes the positive, more opportunities uh, for myself and for the growth of just breaking as a culture and a community. Um, and so I don't see anything as negative. I really try to just keep the same positive attitude. I try to have fun, no matter if it's the smallest event or the biggest event. So yes, a lot of changes, but I try to manage it the best that I can. You are gunning for Paris 2024. Yes. What does that mean to you, uh, having dedicated your whole life to this, yeah. that now you get to compete at an Olympic Games? It's exciting. It's super exciting. I think it's a little bit different for me, and I. I say this to be completely honest because like I didn't grow up watching the Olympics. I never grew up watching a lot of sports. Breaking was my thing. I grew up watching breaking. I was on YouTube watching breaking videos. So I wasn't, let's say, in comparison to like a gymnastics person that grew up watching the Olympics, that's where I want to go. For me, when it first came out, um, I was like, oh, that's cool. But the closer we got, definitely the excitement was building. The opportunities came and I was like, wow, okay, this is a real thing. This is super exciting. There's a lot of media behind it, whatever. I see it more than anything as, a, as an opportunity for us to grow breaking. And breaking is still a very niche community. It's quite small. So my dream is for more people to see this, more people to get involved, more people to fall in love with it the way that I did when I first started. Canadian, you are a gold medal favorite. Mm. Um, I know we have to talk about qualifying and all of that, but you know we're gonna make the assumption you'll get to the games. Mm and you'll have a lot of expectation perhaps on you. Um, how are you processing that or have you, have you yet? Yeah, I think it's still a process. Like I'm still processing, processing it. <laughs> okay. um, I try not let the stress get to me. I think definitely there's a lot more stress even now uh, than there was like a year ago. There's a lot more expectation and moving forward to next year to the games, there will be even more so. Uh, I try to ground myself remembering why I do this. I do this because I love it. My favorite thing is honestly not competing. It's going to practice every day. It's to develop my craft. It's because I love moving. I love what I do. And for me, when I'm in competition, like I'm competing more with myself than anyone else. I know I'm at the level that I can beat anyone, but I also know anyone there can beat me. So I just focus on myself. I try to have fun. A lot of times we're competing against, I'm competing against some of my closest friends. So mm. I really just try to have the most fun that I can. And I want to show that positivity and that fun to the world to, so that people fall in love with not just the competitive aspect, but that the positivity that I've received from uh, this culture and sport. So I got to ask you about how, you know, what you're planning in terms of 
what you will do at the games and how you will compete. Are you working on something new or are you relying on the tried and true things that have got you to where you are today? Mm -hmm. So for my myself and my approach, I'm always trying to create something new. I'm obsessed with the art artistry of trying to create something new all the time. My motto has always been stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Mm -hmm. I train the most that I can all the time because that's what I just love to do. So I will continue to do that to the Olympics. It's made me, it's gotten me this far. So hopefully it'll take me through the games, maybe on the podium, hopefully a gold medal, but we'll see. Well, you know, there'll be an entire country cheering you on. Thank you very much. Thanks for this chat, Phil. Appreciate yes, it. Of course. Thank you very much.